guten Abend, mein Frau, mein Herr. This is, uh, I've decided to do this bit as part one of the nunnery live instead of the cemetery bit being part one. I thought it starts off on a more cheerful line. <laughs> this is the Priory or Nunnery and Priory Church of St. Helens, Roman Catholic. It's on Chargeable Street and Bethel Avenue in Plasto, East London. Um, as you can see, the church is uh, just after the war build. There was an older church there before that was bombed to hell and back again. And there's been a nunnery on these grounds for quite some time. I'm not sure exactly how long, but I will look into that. This is relatively new within the last, say, five, six years. That's where the nuns live now. They had a, they owned a massive, great big swathe of ground. I'll go into that because it would be a little bit interesting. If you're, well, if you are interested in it. If not, then... quite frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Basically, this wall, it goes all the way around back there, down Chargeable Lane. And this ground and everything there. And the nuns owned all that ground and they sold a big chunk of it off. Uh, which has been turned into housing now on Chargeable Lane. They made a good tidy sum out of that. Which is what they had the church repaired out of with. And this place built. Because the old nunnery where the nuns used to live was uh, really run down and stuff. So they needed somewhere new and they didn't want to move. Crush it over now. I've no idea what this one's like inside. It's only open on a Sunday, and I hear they're a bit oh dear, a bit pushy. St Margaret's Convent Chapel. Ah, oh, St Margaret's, not St Helen's. That's my my fault. And it's open Sunday mass times, 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. in Latin. But yeah, it's uh, the nicest bits of the church are obviously the door. As you can see, that's, that looks like Byzantine. That's been done in tiles, like mosaic tiles. I can't zoom in on this phone. I wasn't planning to do any lives today, but I don't feel too bad. So phone clip to the gate then. But yeah, it's a nice church plain from the outside but I've discovered with some of our East End just after the war churches they look plain from the outside you might get a nice surprise on the inside so that's the church as you can see it's got like decorative stuff in the brickwork and everything so they've made it as decorative as they can this will not be long because I don't want to show too much where the nuns live and everything because it's data protection and all that business and whatnot, the age we live in. St Margaret's Convent. I always call it St Helen's and I mix it up every single time. It's actually St Margaret's. But this is the nunnery where the nuns actually live now. They live in there. You often see district nurses and things going in and out because most of these nuns joined the the priory or the nunnery or the convent sorry the convent when they were younger women and they've grown old here so there used to be one that walks in the park over there but when all the covid stuff started she isolated and i've not seen her since so yeah that's the end of that one then that's uh, st margaret's convent and st margaret's priory church take care everyone i hope you'll find that interesting um, i can go around the back bit of the church and show you around that way if you want go around and uh, I'll show you what I mean about the land and you'll see what I mean then only at five minutes at the moment so I'll make this a little bit longer it won't hurt oh, I think there's a dodgy drain here I think so it really is pen and inks oh, I think it's that that stinks 
But this wall obviously is the confine of the church and the nunnery, or the convent. These houses uh, were old two up, two downs, where you had one family lived downstairs and another upstairs. Some of them have been converted into full size houses, and some of them still two up, two downs. Chargeable Street. Um, you see weddings and funerals and things taking place at the church, but now this wall, as you can see, encompasses what the nuns own, or owned, which is a massive big piece of land, and at the 90s, early 2000s and that, when land prices in London started to go really crazy, these old ladies realised that we do not need all this massive great big bit of land, so they Sorry about that, I'll, I'll report that to the Gaslight and Coke company. So yeah, um, they sold. This used to be just the brick wall going along there and all that down to where, at the end where my finger's pointing there, all in here was all owned by the nuns. But they sold this off and it became housing, as you can see. They're nice little flats apparently, they've uh, been done up well, I won't show you too much because where people live. Main thing was to come around and show you the church. But look, there's more of them back there, so it's a sizeable piece of land they sold. I'm glad I came around this way. This will be where the high altar is there, I should very much imagine. It's built like a Byzantine church with a, a curved high altar and with the Byzantine thing at the above the door. Yeah. So yeah, basically two hundred and twelve to two hundred and sixteen, that's just these ones. And you've got one, two, three more sets of those flats and ones that go further back. And all that was owned by the nuns that land and they didn't really need all that land and they sold up. Someone said to me uh, at Stratford Archives when I was doing my own family history years ago that before the cemetery got going, which was in the 1873, the nuns buried some of their people in here. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But I do know, and I always mix her up and call her my nan's aunt. Oh, sorry. My nan had a great aunt, and my nan's family, for her grandparents, was part Catholic, part Church of England. And my nan's great aunt, who was a tuck, not a price, was a nun apparently in the old St Margaret's and I can't find very much about this woman they're very very reclusive and secretive the nuns once the cemetery was opened and they had to start burying in there then that's where they appear to have buried all their people but before 1873 um, my nan's great aunt she was a, a nun who was from the late 1860s to about 1870-71 that's when she disappeared and uh, my nan said that she, her family like, said that she died of TB and she was young. So she would have been born in about 18, say, late 1840s, 1850s. And then obviously became a nun and died young. But yeah, so that's that. And I'm going to turn you off now, guys, because it's school checking out time. Take care. Hello again ladies and gents, we're still at East London Cemetery. This will be a two-parter, this one. This is an interesting little section, this. This is all nuns and priests that are buried in this area. This big section here, where you see these graves, is owned by the nunnery that's over that way, which will be the second part on my, on my way home. But yeah, this is nuns and priests and clergy, this is. And these gra this gravestone, or these gravestones, are made from terracotta. Like brick. You can see they've lost their tops over the years. Fred Hark, Ada Jolly, Vincent.
these are all people that would have had worked connections with benefactors of the nunnery the nunnery owned this bit of ground I don't know if it still does or not but these graves are still here so and they're private graves so I would assume so all men in that one see in the old days they had burial clubs as well so if the nunnery owned a big bit of land here members of their parish or whatnot could join the burial club and you would be assured of a of a decent burial. Funny the other funny thing is none of the others have got dates. Charlotte Harding Adams, 16th of August 1938. This is the only lady to have a date. And someone said to me that that might mean that she was a reverend mother. This one, as you can see, obviously belongs on there and it's ended up over here. There are newer graves interspersed amongst these, so I don't know what the the rap is with these nowadays, whether it's still this is still private land owned by the nunnery, but this is where the, the nunnery buried their own. Or the monastery rather I should say. See look there's another one, Thomas Eyre. So the ones that are normally buried on their own are normally either the priests or the holy reverend mothers, or if it's a monk like with it'd be an abbot. Richard Allett, here we are, Richard Wilson priest. John Llewellyn priest. ABT Raven priest. eighteen eighty to nineteen thirty seven. So I think that's when these men would have been buried in 1880 to 1937. In, anyone that's interested in old cemeteries, this is one of East London's older ones, East London Cemetery, and it is interesting. Uh, if you want to get to this bit, you come into the cemetery, that's the office bit and the entry over there. Walk straight down where the cremations are, straight along here. And this is where the big traveller graves are and whatnot now, because this is Roman Catholic, this section. Let me take my hat off, by the way, sorry. This one's been broken in half, look. That's a shame. And that's terracotta as well, so... I'm half tempted sometimes to go around and stand these things up and try and put them back together and stuff, but... I don't know whether this is vandalism. It does look a little tad bit like vandalism. Mary Flack, these are nuns. And these are old, these the older these ones than the front ones, you can tell by the script. Some of them have cracked in half in place, so, ah, uh, see, look, that's... And they've got, oh, I see why they've broken, it's not vandalism. Look, you've got an iron rod in there, that'll rust, blow the stone apart, and then they'll fall over and fall apart. William John Hobbis died the 12th of October, 1922. So he was obviously someone of some importance to get a stone on his own. There's one there just buried in the ground. There's quite a few of these but and they're interestingly all made from terracotta. I saw once one of these similar ones into No, that's not it. In a cemetery that was made from iron, but it wasn't in this cemetery. Hmm. Mary Kinder, R.I.P. The ones, the ladies and the men buried on their own are usually the priests, abbots and holy reverend mothers. The ones buried together are members of clergy, uh, nuns, monks, people that belong to the parish that may have bought into a burial club or something like that. As you can see this one's over on, over on its front, unfortunately. Let's see if we can turn you back over. Oh no, no I'm not going to interfere with that because it's coming apart, look. Get accused of damage or whatnot. These ones have all been stacked together. 
Robert Surtees, Thornwell, priest, born 1875, died 1950. Alexander Forsyth Asher, priest. Yea Winter and Helen Chalk. Yea, that's an obvious. Uh, might be an Irish name, it might be a foreign name, I'm not quite sure about that. So I won't affix any race to these people. Richard, a priest, RIP. See, these people like these Catholics, they would have been buried like this with few names and details because part of their religion believes that they are known to God, so they didn't really need it. Another one cracked in half. Margaret Crane, Edward Kingshot, Ellen Privet, Annie Steele, Teresa Standing. And this is uh, this is lovely. This will be about a ten minute one. This one. Oh, that's old, that one. Thomas Henry Kett, a priest. RIP, Jesus, mercy, Mary, pray. I don't think there's anything around the back, I'm not quite sure. So yeah, this will just be a short 10 minute one, this is, this will. Um, then the other part of the video will just be showing you the nunnery and the church that belongs to this, or this belongs to them, or did, maybe still does. I should imagine if it was common type ground, they would have reburied here, so I should imagine where well, these graves are, would, are private. To get stones like this, they would be private graves. So, they're obviously here for a reason, so. Because common graves or public graves are dug up quite when they're not being looked after. I mean, give it 40, 50 years. If no one's looking after the graves, they're gone. Like private ones are normally 99 years. I don't know if you can buy a perpetual lease on a grave or whatnot. I think in some places you can. John Grooms Holling. John Grooms Holling's grandson. Celia Harriet Hooper Hollings, Charlotte Margaret Hollings. See, look, this is all a family. So I bet this is like some kind of burial club that belonged to the nunnery. Hmm, it's quite interesting. I'll have a little uh, research into this. I've known about these graves, they've been here years, and I've walked and seen this bit before, but uh, this is no sort of family connection. You don't normally really pay much interest, like, into, not that interest, but research into it kind of thing. I didn't mean that. Interest. Richard Wilson, the priest. John Wilson, the priest. Oh, that's that one I saw earlier. Oh, well, look, this is a, a First World War grave. Captain R.E. Head, M.C. and B.A.R. The King's Liverpool Regiment, 24th of November 1918, aged 34. God is love. Isn't that terrible? Look, the war like, ended on the 11th of November 1918, and this poor man who'd obviously been wounded died at home or in a military hospital of his wounds and was buried here. There's a few of these military graves around in the cemetery. Um, if anyone's interested in this kind of thing as much as I am, let me know and I'll do more of it. I'll probably be doing stuff anyway because it's just it's my interests as well and I know some people find old churchyards interesting. If you don't, just give these ones a miss. Get you to 11 minutes. End you with that. Jesus, mercy, Mary, pray, that says. Take care everyone, 
and bless you all. Keep safe.